Hey, this is uh, Ilana Earhart, and uh, I have my colleague here with me today. Do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Nicole Vuksevic. Hey, so uh, I am a business librarian. Nicole is a digital services associate, and uh, we are going to show you a little bit about Google Drive today. So uh, buckle up, and we're going to get going. I will go into a, a presentation, and then we'll go into live uh, action inside of the Google Drive to let you know exactly what's going on there. So I'm going to share my screen really quick here. There we go. So uh, again, you are watching Introduction to Google Drive. Ah, there we go. Uh, so this is us. Um, and we would love to know what brought you here today. So if you would like to uh, be in contact with the library and tell us anything about uh, programs you would like to see in the future or uh, anything that you may wish still to know about Google Drive, please let us know. So uh, services at your library. So uh, Nicole, do you want to go ahead and take this? Yes. So services at our library through digital services, my department, consists of assisting patrons with learning how to use their technology and connecting them to library resources that can further their learning at home on their own time. Generally, that consists of assistance via email and also through classes like this uh, that we put on for the public as well as a uh, one-to-one -one zoom based uh, tech help appointments so for business information services i also do one-to-one -one appointments for research purposes uh, if you have any questions about how the library can help you and your small business let me know we can set up an appointment you do not have to have a clear question uh, you could just have maybe a project and we'll see what resources will fit that project best. Uh, I do outreach to local communities during regular times. Uh, we are in, a, in some unprecedented times currently, so most of my outreach is digital at the moment. And I, I also am uh, going to provide some grant writing workshops in the fall. So I am designing those currently and, and excited to share that with everyone uh, in the fall of 2020. And so uh, Digital Services and I, uh, we work together to put on programs for the public that combine business and technology. So we are also doing social media. Uh, right now you're uh, with us for Google Drive and in the fall I'll have some content creation that you can join. So that's all of us. Um, and why is Google Drive so important? Well, you have a great capacity to collaborate with a large number of people. There are more than 800 million users uh, worldwide, which means you're fairly unlimited when you decide that you want to collaborate with someone. Uh, 15 gigabytes are available to you of free storage. And if you are certain that as, as a small business owner that you might run out of space, uh, you can also purchase additional space at a minimal cost. Uh, you can share with colleagues and collaborators near and far. Uh, one of the really cool aspects of Google Drive is that when you get into the calendar, you can also set your time to the East Coast if maybe you primarily do your work with the East Coast. Uh, you have free tools available, available to you that are similar to uh, Microsoft uh, Office Suite, and we'll go further into that shortly. Uh, and you have offline editing available to you. So if you have some work that you need to add, you're not in Wi-Fi range, you can still do that work. Once you get into Wi-Fi range, those changes will download. 
Okay, and today's agenda, uh, how to set up your Gmail account, uh, navigating the Google Drive, and tools in the Drive. So we're not going to go into the nitty gritty of how to set up your account. If you would like additional assistance, we can do that with you one on one and Nicole would be more than happy to talk with you. Okay, uh, so Nicole, since you have quite a bit of experience uh, showing people around how to create their Google Drive account, can you go over this information? Yes, so generally there are a few things that Google will require from you in order to create a Gmail account. And that consists of generally your name, your birth date, which they use for verification purposes in case you ever lock yourself out of your account. A cellular phone number, which they also use for verification purposes to secure your account. An alternative email, in case you can no longer access your Gmail account, you can send password reset links there. And generally, if you ever need help with creating a, a Gmail account, it is free and we are more than happy to assist with that account creation, should you need it. I can be reached at digitalservices at jcls.org or at 541-734-3990. Okay, awesome. So that is a pretty exciting um, opportunity for people to get their Google Drive if they don't already have one and their uh, Google account. So um, how do you get your uh, Google Drive account? So there's two different options. You can go into your Google Play and download it or uh, and that's if you have an Android. If you have an iPhone, you could go into your uh, your iStore and go ahead and download it from there. It's pretty simple. Um, and again, if you have any trouble, we can help you one-on-one. -on -one. So here's a quick overview. And we understand this is seeming a little meta currently, but we're going to dive into all of the live uh, clicking around in just a moment here. So we've got a side panel for all the controls that you need within the drive, uh, quick access folders, um, you will quick access files at the top and folders below that. Uh, you can also see uh, searching in the drive and storage capacity. So what are the most common and widely used tools? Uh, a lot of people will use maps and photos, calendars, contacts, um, and play to some extent. So uh, when you're creating documents and creating presentations and everything, the, uh, the tools that you're going to be using most are docs, sheets, slides, forms, and drawing. Um, so, well, drawing may be a little bit less so, but the first four are definitely going to be on your, uh, your list of commonly used tools. So within Google Maps, uh, Nicole, did you want to go over that? Sure. Google Maps is a fairly multi-layered tool, although its primary use is to acquire business information and directions from one point to another. And we'll go through the actual Google Maps program, but this gives you a general overview of what we will discuss, including not only how to search and get directions, but you can change your travel uh, method, the time in which you leave. They have some advanced features under their uh, three dot menu on the side panel, which I will show you. For business users, you can embed your business into Google Maps, which increases your e-traffic and you can change various views. So we'll go over all these a little bit later in the presentation. So with contacts, uh, you can uh, create contacts, you can create labels for them so that they're easy to find, you can import and export. And again, this is something that Nicole will bring us through. Uh, she has quite a bit of uh, knowledge about that and will show us around. Uh, so let's go ahead and dive into it. I'm going to go ahead and uh, end the presentation here. There we go. And so you're going to see that we've been using Google Slides this whole time. 
so that we could begin this presentation. So you can see how useful that is. Okay. Let's see. What I want to do right now is head into our drive. Okay, we're gonna head over there and close that out. Okay, so Nicole, if you want to go ahead and share your screen, uh, I can stop sharing here. Sure. So I'm going to share my screen here really quick and I'm gonna show you what the Google Drive looks like so you get a better idea of what you are seeing when you have a Google account. And when you have a Google account, all of these tools will be available to you and available at all times at your disposal for um, no, no charge. So these programs are free with a Google account. This here is your drive and it has several features. We'll go over those. The first and most important being your side panel here off to the left. You have here various sections within your drive. You can see things that are shared with you, your overall drive view. You can access recent folders from here. You can get things in and out of the trash here. You can also see your storage capacity here. Every Google user gets 15 gigs for free. That can be expanded if it is necessary for an additional charge. Generally though, Google will notify you if that takes place and you can address it at that time. In your drive, you'll also have a quick access area. This quick access area shows you what you have most recently accessed, edited, or created within your drive. Below that, you'll see your folders and within these folders, subfolders for drive organization. You can also search your drive via file type. So like PDFs or photos or images, you can also search by the program in which the file was created, such as Google Docs, spreadsheets, or slides. And it will then filter out that information from the rest of your files in your drive for easy access. You access the programs within Google Drive by clicking this new button in the corner. And when you do so, you will see all the available programs that Google offers for you. I'm gonna open a couple of these so you can see the overall layout. Google Docs is one. It is similar in some ways to Microsoft Word. It is a document generating software. And generally the layout is pretty similar. You get a lot of the same uh, or similar functionality. It has spell check. You can print from here. You can change your font type, size, your margins and your layout, you can insert images and hypertext links. It also has a nifty feature called autosave. So whenever you make a change within a document, so let's say I just title this, you'll notice this little saving feature. And every time you make a change, you will see this show up because it saves your documents to the cloud. So you never have to worry about losing any of your information. It is always available to you should you need it. And you can't lose the work that you have created. You can also download any Google Drive created file for offline use and editing. So you can type, make the changes that you need to make. And when you get connected to the internet, it will then sync those changes to your drive. Additionally, just like uh, similarly to Microsoft Office, they have Google Sheets, which is Google's version of Excel. It is a spreadsheet program and has similar editing features and functions as Documents does. You also have the ability to work in slides and you viewed slides earlier. That was what we were conducting this presentation with. Google Forms gives you the option to create feedback forms, tests, quizzes, and other such forms where you can gather information 
both from clients or the public for events you put on or services that your business is offering. So it can be very useful as a feedback tool. Google Drawings allows you to create charts and diagrams and organizational flow brainstorming charts. So it can be very handy for a lot of business users because if you need to get analytics or projections, you can put them into a form and you can tie them back to a spreadsheet for uh, analytics, which is quite nice. You also have the ability within the drive to access templates, much, much like you would um, in Microsoft Office. And those templates are available whenever you hover over a program, those templates show up as from a template option, and you will be taken to that program's template gallery. Most of these templates are free. You can also acquire more of these templates online. And many of the templates that are available to you have um, potential use uh, for your business, like budget sheets, financial statements, purchasing orders, invoices, employee hours, website traffics, and analytics forms. So the form is already created, you just have to fill in your own information. And so in that way, the Google Drive and its available programs can be used collaboratively and intuitively to help you grow your business and see the information that is available to you. Each of those programs has those templates available to you. And I'm gonna stop sharing here so Alana can take on the next part of the drive. Okay, so cool. I am excited to share that we have uh, so photos to share with you. So I have uploaded some photos and I kind of elaborated that so that you can see how that works when you are potentially going to uh, do a marketing campaign and, and use your images and be able to share them with colleagues. Okay, so again, we're gonna start here on this main panel, uh, but I'm gonna go up here to the nine dots and uh, down here and click photos. Okay, so one thing they want you to notice is that uh, everything is on a timeline right now. So it shows when things were uploaded. So we've got a couple of different months uh, and a lot of different types of images. You're not stuck in this view. Uh, you can go into albums. You can create albums, which I have already done. Um, all you would need to do is go in, press the plus sign. I uh, can add a title. So I'm gonna say new album and add photos. So the photos that you add are going to be from what you've uploaded or from what was automatically uploaded from your phone when you took photos. Uh, so as I scroll, I can decide, okay, I want to add this and this. I also really like dinosaurs and microphones are fun. So I'm gonna call that Good, and click done. Uh, now new album has all of the photos that I selected. And I can go back and see all of the albums that I have created. Uh, I wanted to give you a little bit more in-depth look as well. So when you click on an individual photo, you're gonna have a lot of information beside it. So you've got uh, some descriptive information up here. This is the uh, album that it comes from. This is when it landed in your Google Drive. If I had taken a photo uh, from my, uh, my smartphone, then my smartphone would have had, uh, you know, specs of the camera and all of that, and that would be recorded here. 
So uh, if you do end up taking photos with your smartphone, you'll be able to see what type and uh, what quality of camera and everything. So uh, one thing that I want to be really transparent about is that uh, photos in your Google Drive aren't, that's not necessarily the best way to keep track of all of your images for marketing and any other business need. Uh, so what I would do is go ahead and uh, upload your images to your Google Drive instead of to your Google Photos. So the reason I would do that is because you don't have access to subfolders and sub subfolders uh, in your albums. It won't let you sub album, which for some people can be a, a little bit of a difficulty uh, when search terms aren't quite enough to find exactly what you're looking for. And you can't quite remember when it was uploaded to your photos, then that could present a little bit of a problem, but the solution to that is going into your Google Drive, creating a folder for your images where you can proliferate all the subfolders that you want. Uh, and we can show you that uh, in person, uh, currently one-to-one -one over Zoom, but uh, when life goes a little bit back to the new normal, uh, we'll be able to do in person. So, uh, that's images for you, and I'm going to go ahead and stop screen sharing and hand the mic over to Nicole. Alrighty, uh, I'm going to take you through Google Maps. So I'm going to share my screen here. And when you're in the drive, this nine dot menu will give you access to all the programs within the drive. So you would select Maps. And what you will see is the Google Maps program. This is a multi-layer tool. I'm going to show you exactly how this works by doing a search. So I'm going to type in the name of a business. And in that search, I will be given various forms of information that are embedded within Google Maps by the business itself. I can get information about what services they are offering, um, especially during the pandemic. A lot of places will say they are takeout only versus dine-in. I can get information about its location. I can get a clickable link to open the website. I can get phone information, menu information. I can reserve a table at the restaurant. I can also get patron reviews who uh, frequent this establishment and see uh, what the community thinks. I can also share this information with others. So I can send this information via email or text. I can send this information directly to my phone if, if I'm on the go or if I need this information for later. You also have the ability to search the drive for directions. And if I'm copying that address, I can go in and click the directions button. And from here, I can get directions from my current location. To the location I would like to go to, and it will give me detailed directions including estimated time frames for how long based on current traffic rates that that will take to go from one place to the other. I also get the ability, if you'll notice up here, this menu allows you to change your transportation method, which will then change your directions as well. Currently, it's set to mass transit, but I don't want to take the bus. Let's say I want to take a car. And it will then give me appropriate directions based on driving directions versus transit. I can get walking, biking, and if it applied, I can get uh, flight times as well. This particular function within Google Maps is actually fairly accurate for the most part, and these time frames will change. Right now it's 11 minutes, it's early in the morning, and there's not too many people on the road. This may change midday around four or five, it may take a little longer, depending on current traffic rates, and Google does factor that information in. 
I also have the ability to change when I leave. So let's say I don't want to go anywhere until mm, we'll take a lunch. We'll say 11:45. And what it'll do is it will estimate my time frames when I will arrive and it will allow me to send this information to my phone so that I have those directions available and waiting for me when I am ready to go. I also have the ability here on the, they call this a, a three dot menu, <laughs> to change the map layout. I can choose a standard map, which shows me major streets, uh, major highways, but I can also choose to view it in a satellite form, which shows me more satellite based images. I can see terrain based information. So it'll show me more trails, possibly the greenway path and other information, which can be handy. I also get the option to see traffic information. It'll display lights, uh, varying uh, stop areas, which is kind of nice, intersections. I get to see under transit where bus stops are generally. Um, I can get that kind of information as well, which is kind of handy so you can see where a stop is located. I also get the option to see Street View, and Street View is a light 3D image of a location. So when you are viewing any location just in general, you can click on that location, and when you click on the Street View image, it will give you a light interactive 3D view at street level. That's a pretty handy feature. Generally, I also have the ability, because I'm sharing my location with Google, to mark my places. And my places are things like places I frequent, whether it's work or home. I can input that address, and instead of having to type it in every single time, I can simply go to my places, select home, and I will get automatic directions from my current location to home or work. It's kind of handy. It saved me a lot of typing <laughs> to fill that out and mark my, my favorite locations. You can also view your timeline where you have the ability to see where you've been over time. Uh, you also have the ability to share or embed a map. This can be very handy as a function for business owners because you can add your business and then embed various informations into the map location like you saw with Olive Garden. Because of the links that are tied to that embedded information, it can increase your e-traffic if you have website presence, um, which can be very handy. You also have the ability to add a missing place. Google is a largely crowdsourcing entity for its maps. So if you run across a place that you have never been or doesn't seem to be in Google Maps, you can actually add a missing place and give Google information about that place in order to provide them with information that they can then provide to others in the community for that location. So Google Maps ends up being pretty handy for people who uh, would like more information um, and generate more e-traffic to their websites for their business. And I'm going to hand mic over to Mona because she made a really interactive map. Yeah, so uh, I was really excited to find some new tools to play with in maps. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and give you a tour. So we're gonna start out at the same maps panel uh, that you started out with just a few minutes ago. I'm going to show you how to create your own saved places on maps and describe a little bit about why that's important for small businesses uh, as a tool for planning and a tool for retaining data and other information. So uh, what I wanna do is click on your places and I'm gonna to go to maps. So I'll go ahead and click into the one that I created. And this gives me a little bit of what I've created 
but I'm going to say open in my maps because that gives me a little bit more control. So when I'm all the way in here, uh, you can see that I shamelessly created some promotional information about the library. Uh, we've got all 15 branches listed here. And those are the blue dots. Uh, and I can click on any one of them and you'll see an information card uh, suddenly pop up. Uh, you can see everything that I've entered there. It's connected to the information that Google has about the library branch. Uh, and so as I'm going through this, you might be thinking, well, what, why do I need that as a small business owner? This could be really uh, a great tool for you to track your industry in an area and what your market share of that industry is in a particular uh, maybe county or city or state, depending on the size of area you want to cover. Uh, we have a database called A to Z databases where you can find information on uh, either many of the same types of business businesses at the same time, or you can look more deeply into each one as well. Uh, and that information is demographic. It shows you how many people are employed there. What is the revenue? What is the credit rating? So many data points that you might be interested in. You can save that information into a map. Uh, just go ahead and paste it in the map and save whatever data points are the most important to you. Uh, and you can create several layers within each map. So I can go ahead and look at the second layer. Uh, and that is all of the purple dots. So now they are highlighted. I decided to look at all of the public parks that are available in Jackson County. I doubt that Google noticed every single one of them, but this was a quick search. Um, so again, when we click on it, you get all of the basic information that I've entered in. Excuse me, I'm gonna grab a little bit of water here. Okay, again, you get some of the basic information and uh, maybe if there is an industry that's adjacent to yours that you also want to track maybe they tend to partner with your type of business and you want to know how many of them are around and where they are in relation to the locations of your other collaborators or competitors so uh, this was something that i was pretty excited about learning and again if you would like individual help uh, i can definitely work with you one-on-one -on -one through zoom and we can go ahead and create maps just for whatever uh, information focus you have in your small business so i'm gonna go ahead and hand this over to nicole all righty we're gonna head on to the google calendar which is a wonderful creative tool i'm gonna share my screen here so you can see it and again, in any program you're in, no matter where you are, this nine dot menu always shows up and you can access calendar from here. When you are within calendar, you will see this layout. You will also see various calendars here on the bottom. So if someone shares their calendar with you, this is where you would see it. You have the ability within calendar to create dates and under that ability, you can actually add a number of fields. So not only can you title a calendar date, but you can also add guests from your contacts list who will then be invited to this event. You can functionally do it as a video conference with Google Meets. You can also add locations. So if I wanted to add a location, for instance, it would then embed that location information into the map, at which point if you share that information with others, they will receive direct directions uh, to Google Maps, which is kind of nice as a link. Under more options, 
You also have the ability to change your notifications. So if you have an upcoming meeting and you've scheduled it a week in advance, you can set how early you receive those notifications. You can receive them 30 minutes before, an hour before, days before. You also have the option to change how you become notified. Uh, you can do that through desktop notifications or via email. I choose email. You can change your time zone if you work collaboratively as a business with others who are in different time zones than you are. You can then schedule meetings in an appropriate time zone so that you're working on their schedule or they are working on yours. You can create meetings as a recurrent meeting. So if you have business-based meetings that take place on generally a similar day every week, you can then create the meeting and have it repeat weekly, daily, monthly. You also have the ability to change the visibility who can see this. So sometimes you create private meetings for your own personal appointments and then you need other meetings for your organization as a whole, so your employees and others, and you can change how they see that or whether they see it at all. You can also add information into uh, the description box here where you can share links and any other information that they might need, uh, which is pretty handy. When you're done creating the meeting, it will show up on your calendar similarly to this. It will give you a brief description. You also have the ability to share from here so you can always edit or send an email to yourself or change anything you may need. And that's pretty much calendar in a nutshell. The next program in the drive that I'd like to take you through is contacts. And contacts can be used collaboratively uh, in varying ways. Generally with contacts, it will list a uh, complete contacts list. If you have a Google Drive account, these often will consist of phone numbers or contacts as well as their email accounts. But you have the ability to add more information when you create contacts within Google or update existing ones if they are not as complete as you would wish. With Google Contacts on the left-hand side, you will see varying uh, sections. This displays all of your contacts that Google has access to. Frequently contacted is, of course, the most frequently contacted people that you have interactions with. Merge and Fix is an interesting tool within Google Contacts. I have not seen this tool very often in contacts listing, but essentially what it does is it allows you to find duplicates in your contact list. So if you have an individual who has, for instance, an email and their name, but not their phone number in the same contact card, Google will see those duplicates and allow you to merge them and fix them so that that information, instead of in two cards, is synced into one. I've used that tool myself multiple times. It's very handy. Labels allow you to create organizational structure within your contacts list. When you're looking at just the contacts list, it can be a mess. Mine's, I have about 200 contacts in my list, generally uh, for my personal use. And I use labels to separate those out from people that I contact for work, for home, for family, for in case of emergency and varying other contacts. And so when I select a label, it allows me to sort through my contacts and pull out specific groups so they're displayed instead of my entire list. Other contacts is how you view contacts that you maybe do not want to share with the public. So Google has a feature where because of the nature of larger organizations, occasionally not all contacts are appropriate to share with your organization as a whole. So you can hide sensitive contacts or sensitive numbers and names that you may not want to share with your organization and they show up here under other contacts. You also have the ability to send these contacts in your Google account out to other accounts that you may use. So for instance, you have the ability to export your Google contacts out to, for instance, an Apple iCloud account or an Outlook email account if you need to. 
by that same token, you can also import contacts from another program like Apple iCloud or like Outlook and import those contacts into Google so that you have them in, in, in both programs. You can also share contacts with others. And when you create a contact, you have quite a bit of availability for information to be displayed. It comes preloaded with just the basics where you input the individual's name, phone number, and email. But if you click the more options, what you'll see is the ability to not only add their name and information regarding their phone numbers and emails, you will also get the ability to list them by job title, company information. You'll be able to see things like their birthday or other major events that that may be pertinent to them. If they have a website, you can see that. You also have the ability to chat through Google if you have that set up and doing internet VoIP calls as well. And you can create notes. So if you have a contact for a client that you need to make special notes on that other people may see that are pertinent to dealing with that individual, you can put them in the notes section and it can be really handy. And that is contacts in a nutshell. I'm gonna turn it back over to Alana. Hey, uh, so that is our presentation on everything that you can get started on in your Google Drive once you've got your Gmail set up. Uh, we are next gonna go into uh, how to share and collaborate next month. Uh, in the second edition. There are three parts of the series and third in the series will be all of the advanced tools. So go ahead to jcls.org, click on programs and events, and you will see all of the programs that we're doing. If you want only to see the small business programs, go ahead and click on the category option, click business, and you will see all of that listed. So for right now, we just want to remind you of a few things that are good to keep uh, in your memory as you uh, go on with the rest of your day after learning with us. So uh, remember that there is automatic save in the Google Drive, so you do not have to worry about uh, losing information. There are only a couple of instances where you do have to save, such as creating a contact. Um, and it'll be pretty obvious there will be a large save button. If you see no save button, you're good. So uh, there is no cost unless you want to scale up and have more than 15 gigabytes of storage. Uh, and it's all stored to the cloud, so you're not having to save it to your local computer and taking up any of that storage. You can collaborate with people on any um, time zone. So again, you could choose uh, the East Coast as your time zone in your calendar. And whenever you make a meeting, it's clear exactly when you're going to meet and you don't have to make any mistakes that way. Uh, and you can get one-on-one -on -one help with us. So uh, I am reachable by email or phone. So E-E-R-H-A-R-D-T at jcls.org is my email address and 541-734-3992 uh, is how I can be contacted via phone. So um, yeah, we look forward to hearing from you and connecting with you. If you have any questions at all about how to get your business online with Google, I do have a recording. Uh, when the library partnered with Grow with Google, we did a program showing people how to do just that. So I can send that along your way if you are curious. So uh, thank you for joining us. And, and thank you, Nicole, for all of the work that we do together and, and everything that you bring to uh, business tech programs. Thank you, Alana, right back at you. And thank you everyone for checking us out today.